Scenes like this can make many users feel sick. Why does this happen? How can we prevent this in a future with virtual worlds? We visited the University of Italian-speaking Switzerland in Lugano, where computer scientist Piotr Didik and his team are studying the causes of nausea in virtual spaces and are developing solutions to fix them. So yes, yeah, so our group is interested in content generation, so graphics content generation for novel display devices such as virtual reality devices and augmented reality devices. Any discomfort comes from the fact that using the VR or AR devices, we are not able to fully replicate our experience in the real world. The human eyes, they use different and means of perceiving depth information in the scene. And one of them is vertence. So as we, as we move in objects in 3D space, we move our eyes. So we either diverge or verge. And so there's are those horizontal rotational movements of the eyes, which allow our eyes to focus you know, our attention on the particular object. The other property of our human visual system is the ability to adjust the focal length of the, of the lenses. So th this is very similar as to, to cameras where we take pictures. We usually have to adjust the focus to make our subject or our object that we take a picture of in focus so it doesn't appear blurry. And because this is a coupled process, you know, our human brain expects this to also happen in the VR device. But in the VR device, they usually have a screen at the fixed distance so we would adapt always the, the shape of our lens or we would focus our lenses on the specific distance where we would be still kind of uh, stimulating the vergence cue by showing uh, objects in front or behind the screen, right? Another problem is the conflict between visual and so-called vestibular cues. The vestibular system in our inner ear is responsible for the sense of balance and spatial orientation. With this setup, the scientists are testing how people react to a virtual roller coaster ride. The system tracks eye movements and records the levels of sickness over time. The person taking part in the trial can indicate the level of discomfort by moving a joystick. Good resolution and high frame rates also contribute to the prevention of cyber sickness. However, it requires a lot of computational power. So the scientists in Lugano are working on programming that provides high quality in the area where a user looks, but saves processing power in areas that are less important. Only in the vicinity of the point where we are looking at, the quality that we see is the highest. As we move in the image away from this location where we are focusing, our ability to see high quality content actually decreases. At the end, the quality that we have to provide you know, using rendering system in the periphery, so in the locations which are far from the point at which we are looking, can be lowered. So this is what you can see here. We have again the gaze location here in the center simulated, and then we have a high quality image, you know, around this location. Then as you go into the periphery, the quality reduces, but you can see these funny patterns, some pa funny noise patterns, but some, you know, very inexpensive to generate pattern, which is sufficient to make this indistinguishable from actually original rendering. <laughs>